Hi everyone, welcome to this session of the Tiger Academy, US stock financial statements for beginners. In the last lesson, we learned the three major indicators under the revenue category, total revenue, profit, and gross margin. These three indicators can help us roughly determine the competitiveness of a company. In this lesson, we'll learn the three key metrics of operating expenses in the income statement. SG&A expenses, R&D expenses, and depreciation expenses. By learning these three metrics, we can access the cost management capability of a company. A company with good cost management skills will have a better profitability. Now, let's go through it in detail. Section 1. Selling, General and Administrative Expenses Selling, General and Administrative Expenses as its literal meaning, includes selling expenses and administrative expenses. Selling expenses are the costs of hiring people, advertising and marketing to sell its products. Administrative expenses are the costs of corporate management, including travel, hospitality and salaries, etc. This concept seems simple, right? But I will remind you here that the ratio of SG&A expenses or operating expenses is very critical, which can have hidden information. Let me give you an example of Ford in the auto industry. During the past five years, the SG&A expenses accounted for 54% of total operating expenses, which means that Ford was paying very high costs in this section. If its product sales are low, investors' money can hardly return. Once the company with high SG&A expenses is trapped in financial crisis, investors are likely to suffer great losses. So you need to be careful about companies that are stuck with high SG&A expenses. We learned that the SG&A expenses are necessary for companies' operation. But high expenses may be risky. In addition, companies still have other expenses. You may also agree that technology is indispensable for companies' sustainable growth. Technology-related expenses are called research and development expenses in the financial statements. Section 2. Research and development expenses. We all know that technology drives productivity, but is it really better to spend more on research and development no matter what? Of course not! Technology is changing rapidly nowadays. Expensive R&D expenses not only consume a lot of human and financial resources, but also makes companies' operation vulnerable once the company's research is disrupted by other disruptive technologies. Warren Buffett has a principle when reading financial reports. Companies that must spend heavily on R&D are at competitive disadvantage. Once these technologies become obsolete, the company's long-term prospect will be in jeopardy. Therefore, investors should be particularly cautious when investing in companies that consistently invest high amounts of investments in R&D. In addition to the above two cost items, the last cost item, Account 3 depreciation and amortization expenses. Section 3. Depreciation and amortization expenses. Depreciation and amortization expenses are usually of great importance in the manufacturing industry. The property, plant, and equipment purchased by a company will eventually be scrapped due to wear and tear. They're called depreciation and amortization expenses in the income statements. Suppose your company purchased communication equipment worth 2 million USD this year. The economic life of the equipment is 10 years. According to the regulations of the US IRS, the $2 million expenditure cannot be expensed at one time, but shall be included in the depreciation expenses of each year. For example, the 10-year schedule. In other words, the annual depreciation expenses is 2 million USD divided by 10 years equals 20,000 USD per annum. Regarding this equipment, the annual depreciation expenses is 20,000 USD, which is amortized year by year. After 10 years, the equipment will be scrapped. As you can see, depreciation and amortization is applied to average out the expense of property, plant, equipment over its economic life. While there's nothing wrong with this calculation method, many companies are abusing this convention. For example, some companies would try to extend the depreciation time in order to create more profit for the current period. Through the knowledge, have you just got a new skill to identify financial fraud? That's all for the three key items under operating expenses in the income statements. I will illustrate with the following chart. Operating income equals gross profit minus operating expenses. Let's start with a question. What would you do if you wanted to significantly increase your operating income? 
I guess most people would choose to reduce sales costs and operating expenses. On the surface, there is no problem, but in fact, the consequences could be serious. Why? Because a company reduces employee benefits and wages in order to cut costs. Then the company's operation will have problems. If you were working in this company, you would surely leave. Therefore, excessive cost control might only reduce brand value or lead to high employee turnover. Then some of you may ask, what should we do? My answer is, increasing revenue and reducing costs are equally important. Both of them are designed to increase income, which determines whether the company is competitive or not. In other words, we need to be more concerned about how much money a company has left. Here, we're going to learn a new indicator. As we learned in previous lesson, gross profit divided by total revenue equals gross margin. So is there an operating margin? Bingo! How do we calculate the operating margin? The equation is as follows. Operating margin equals operating income divided by total revenue. Unlike gross margin, operating margin represents a company's operating performance in its main business. When we buy a company's stock, we are investing in this company. We are optimistic about its main business and putting faith in its management team. If the company does a good job in its main business and generates higher profit, we as shareholders will benefit by receiving dividends or through the rise of the stock price. However, if the company generates profit from pure luck, it is difficult to maintain sustainable profit. Therefore, the operating margin is one of the key metrics for our assessment of the company. If we are going to determine an attractive level of operating margin, based on my investment experience, that level should be above 10%. Well, to sum up this session, we have learned not only to judge a company's cost control by three major metrics under operating expenses, but also to evaluate the performance of a company's main business by operating margin. In the next session, I will walk you through net income. See you next time!